Hey rockers, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into the life and career of the one and only Warren D. Martini, the guitar virtuoso who probably wrote and played some of your favorite 80s anthems and solos. Before we jump into the story, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our content. Warren Justin D. Martini is best known as the lead guitarist for the band Rat, which achieved international stardom in the 1980s. D. Martini was born on April 10, 1963 in Chicago, Illinois, the youngest of five boys. The family later relocated to San Diego, California. D. Martini became interested in rock music due to the influence of his older brothers. D. Martini's mother bought him a guitar when he was seven or eight years old. According to Warren, he struggled learning to play due to the tuning pegs being cheap, causing the guitar to go constantly out of tune. As a result, he became frustrated and smashed the instrument, as he had seen Pete Townsend do. As a result, that was the last guitar he would receive as a gift. At age 14, he got himself a job in order to raise money to purchase a new guitar, a cheap Les Paul copy. The first song D. Martini learned was Sunshine of Your Love by Cream. Warren played his first concert with his band, The Plague, at San Diego's La Jolla High School at the age of 15. The first year he signed up, he won the best new guitar player in San Diego at Guitar Trader. D. Martini was only 18 years old when he got called up to Los Angeles to join Mickey Rat. At the time, he was attending college in San Diego and was reluctant to drop out to join a band that had so far had only limited success. The band would eventually become Rat. D. Martini replaced Jake E. Lee, who was hired by Ozzy Osbourne in December of 1982. D. Martini lived with Lee to learn the songs, and each greatly influenced the other's style. What makes Warren's playing so unique? His ability to seamlessly blend melodic lines with blistering speed, showcasing his versatility as a guitarist, and earning him accolades from fans and fellow musicians alike. To achieve such speed and precision, D. Martini employs a combination of alternate picking, legato techniques, and economy picking. While technical proficiency is undoubtedly a hallmark of D. Martini's playing, it is his expressive vibrato that truly sets him apart. D. Martini's vibrato is both powerful and nuanced, allowing him to inject his solos with an unparalleled level of soul and expression. D. Martini's lead guitar became one of Rat's most recognizable aspects, and he co-wrote several of the band's best-known songs, including Round and Round, Lay It Down, Dance, and Way Cool Jr. Released in 1983, the band's self-titled EP sold over 100,000 records, and the band got signed to Atlantic Records. Releasing Out of the Cellar in 1984, the album received a lot of radio and MTV play with songs like Round and Round, Wanted Man, Back for More, and Lack of Communication. Out of the Cellar is widely regarded as a defining moment in 1980s heavy metal. The band's second full-length album, Invasion of Your Privacy, was released in July of 1985. It contained favorites, You're in Love, and Lay It Down, one of the best riffs of the 80s. I saw Rat headline a theater in 1984, and as part of Day on the Green in 1985. Rat's next release was Dancing Undercover on August 9th, 1986. Popular tracks on that album include Dance and Slip of the Lip, showing a heavier side to the band like the song Body Talk. Reach for the Sky was released in November of 1988, which contained the popular tracks Way Cool Jr. and I Want a Woman, and was the band's last album to be certified platinum. Rat's fifth album, Detonator, was released in August 1990. The album garnered mixed reactions. Detonator featured Giving Yourself Away and Loving You's a Dirty Job. In February of 1992, Percy exited the group to form a new band called Arcade. After Rat broke up, D. Martini had a short stint with Dokken before briefly becoming a touring guitarist for hard rock band Whitesnake in 1994. In 1995, he released his debut solo song, Surf's Up, as an EP, followed by his only full-length album to date, Crazy Enough to Sing to You, in 1996. In 1996, the five classic era members of Rat began discussing a reunion with a subsequent album. Rat eventually moved forward with a lineup of Piercy, D. Martini, 
Bobby Blotzer, along with new member Robbie Crane on bass. In 1998, Rat secured a worldwide record deal with Sony. The self-titled Rat album, released in July 1999, featured new material with a more conventional blues rock feel. In 2003, Dee Martini was hired to replace guitarist Doug Aldrich in the band Dio, but after several rehearsals, he decided to leave. According to him, the Rainbow and Black Sabbath stuff sounded amazing, but the Dio solo stuff didn't fit his style. Rat reformed again in 2007 and began a tour in the summer of that year. In April 2009, Loud and Proud, Roadrunner Records announced the signing of a worldwide deal with Rat. Their new album, Infestation, was released in April 2010 and reached number 30 on the Billboard chart. In a March 18, 2010 interview, B. Martini said of the new album, Infestation, it really exceeded our expectations. On October 26, 2010, Rat announced that the band would be going on indefinite hiatus due to internal tensions. In January of 2012, Percy said that Rat was in the process of writing material for a new album planned to be released that summer. That never came to fruition, though. In March 2018, it was widely rumored that D. Martini had lost interest continuing forward with Rat due to ongoing problems within the band. On June 1, 2018, it was announced by Percy that Rat would move forward with him and bassist Crocier. It was confirmed that D. Martini had departed from Rat. D. Martini has toured as part of the revolving supergroup, Kings of Chaos, since 2019. In January of 2021, Percy expressed interest in making one final Rat album with all the remaining original members. In September of 2022, Percy revealed that he would only want to continue Rat with the remaining classic era bandmates, but it's not going to happen. He said reuniting with the members would be all business pretty much but that there is no business in the rat camp. And there you have it, Rockers, the story of Warren D. Martini from his humble beginnings to the heights of rock stardom. If you enjoyed this dive, give us a thumbs up, share with your fellow fans, and comment below your favorite Warren D. Martini moment. Until next time, keep on rocking, and we'll catch you in the next video.